Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a CIS matchup to remember right now. Four is showing up on map number one. We talked about it. Spear have dominated in the last six matchups, but coming out of the player bricks, Spear have looked a little rough. The timing's on the T side. Definitely a couple of weaknesses, but we're heading into Nuke, and this is their comfort ground, Alex. This is where they should be putting in a good performance. Yeah, that's what Spirit will be hoping for. We saw both these teams play this map yesterday. They both ended up losing. Spirit took it a little bit closer, though. They had that 16-12 loss against OG. They were able to put up some rounds. Let's see how they look on it today. We're heading underway into the second map of this series. Spirit starting on that T side. And already we've got a couple of P250s dropped over on the Spirit side of things. Mir and Magix both getting the P250 and armor. That's well, having a great time. Yeah, he's just opening and closing the door. Jerry was outside. It's Almeida with the first kill. Magic's going down. That opens things up for fours. Coming into Nuke, I'm a little bit scared, though, for Team Spirit. If they perform the way they did and, and make a lot of mistakes where their individuals aren't really showing up apart from Magic's, it's a little scary because fours can play Nuke. Yeah, absolutely. They, they used to play this map a lot. Fools used to yeah. pick this map all the time in 2019. It, it's definitely a map there no slouches on. Already had the trades to kick things off here on this pistol round. I like SDY's war cry as well. It's power. Going to open and close that door. And here they go down to this B site. Yeah, but look at the power. He's just crouched up the ramp. They have no idea how close he is on the right side. The double door is getting open wide, but Flick goes down. Will they check the power? I feel like he's got the... Good position right now to potentially take a few of these players down, but he dives down, he's been spotted in towards Kelby. That gives away his position. Unfortunately, he could have done so much more, and he does nothing. Force will lose the pistol around. It's Team Spirit with the first on the board. That first kill from Mir, using the P250 at longer range at Yard. Then they swung open this door, closed it again, which seemed to bait out that peak. And unfortunately for Fours, because some of their players die off pretty quickly here, they're not able to get those crossfires. They're not able to get those trades going. Nice start for Spirit, though, on this T side. We were saying earlier how they weren't able to get too many T rounds yesterday. Well, winning the pistol round might be able to help them get some early T rounds on the board here. They are against the Force Spy, though, but... The power already caught out in the open. Chopper takes him down. Oh, fist crack. He's uh, going to try and land a couple of shots. He will do so, but it's Almirza that actually finishes off the prey. Four versus four. Team Spirit taking a bit of damage on board for Magic. You will still get a kill, though. This crack picked off a man advantage re-established for Team Spirit. Minute on the clock. Oh, split. his leg has been spotted around the corner. I just bounce is going to take that kill alongside Chopper, who cuts through the secret stairs, finding Jerry. It's just Almir's to left alone. Player that had an incredible performance before his over on Inferno. I'm looking forward to seeing if he can keep that up. He was just hitting pretty much everything. How can you not say that he had an amazing performance on the first map, Dinko? That's the pun that, you got to go. I'm leaving that to you, because you, you're, uh, okay, you're one for the terrible job. jokes and uh, the puns. I'm not going to steal your thunder, Alex. Oh, thank you. So considerate of you. Yeah, not much to do at the end here with the CZ. Just looking for a kill or two. Bates out the nade from Spirit. I guess that's an extra $300 that has to be rebought. You take the small wins at this point because you're not in the best position. Even just saving the CZ would be fine, considering they did fully force up into this one. And it looks like he might be able to do that. Still, though, Spirit getting the 2-0 start should turn into a 3-0 lead as well, considering fours won't have much to work with. And, oh, there we go. Sniping with the CZ. Long range for Almeza gets the kill. Even decides to upgrade to a D at the end there. Pretty decent end to the round for him. Unfortunately, his teammates won't have the same luxury of having as much to work with in this round. So Power at least is able to buy a 5-7 and still have enough money to probably buy the AWP. A couple of his teammates also buying up pistols, but we would expect Spirit to be taking the 3-0 lead without too many difficulties. Now, Team Spirit. 
got themselves the 8k47s out from magic so i just bounced some die young galir for chopper max 10 from here so yeah plenty of opportunities for money to be built out for this team side uh, team spirit side a lot of money available and up for grabs magics small opportunity to fight flight doesn't quite work out for him It's a slower approach from Team Spirit. This is something they did on Dust 2, actually, yesterday on their map picks. Generally, they have a slower approach on the T side. They have a game plan of how they want to approach the rounds. It's very methodical and slow. They'll wait until all mistakes have been thought about. The utility has been put in place. And as the smoke's towards outside, they generally will do this where they just leave Chopper as the only player out there. Very confident in his abilities. And the smoke is going to go down towards me, but look at that timing for Fist Track taking down Chopper, picking up a rifle, but Mira's quick. The information was passed on, and now they find the kills. Alex, three versus two, man advantage for Team Spirit. Decent trade so far. I think both teams will be okay with the position they've put themselves in. And if Jerry gets the timing right here, he may be able to get this kill, but oh, he didn't spot eye disbalance. Flit now, the only man remaining for fours. And uh, back at the CIS RMR event, before the player break, where Spirit finished second, I do remember Spirit having some issues on their T side of Nuke, where they would run these really slow plays. And I think Nuke is a map where you can't always afford to do that, because it's not like you can just go for a late round execute on Nuke, for example. You don't really have that same ability. So I think I would like to see Spirit, once we get into the gun rounds, go for at least some map control and start to try and force some rotations. Nice kill from Flit at the end here. There's an AK for him. This is a pretty good round for Falls, all things considered. Three kills, an AK recovered for Flit. He'll get to carry that over into this next round. All things considered, I think Falls will be happy with that. Yeah, I think they will be. And Falls can move into this round with plenty of utility. Every weapon available to them that they could want. They got the AWP out in the hands as a power. Again. I'd love to see it get involved early on here on Nuke. Love to see a classic as a power performance. He really hasn't had that, I don't feel, in uh, in terms of having one of those big, flashy rounds. He did have some moments over on Inferno, giving the AWP to him in the last round. Worked out in the apartment, so delivering enough impact for the team when called upon. And now he's going to go looking down into his lobby. The door is blown off. The power is completely scoped in. Waiting for a player to overextend or give an opportunity, but he realizes that won't be happening. So smokes down the door. And Team Spirit are going to be heading outside with their smokes going up and trying to balance on the AWP out here as well. But Force not really taking the fight. playing much more passively, allowing this execute to come on in. It isn't the standard. It's a slight variation where the, the wall smokes land in front of T-Con instead. And while Jerry is down in towards the secret stairs, just at the top of the stairs, waiting for players to cross on into his domain. And while he's peaked at the right time, he can't get a kill, though. That's unfortunate. Mio finds one on the face crack. And we've got ourselves a, two versus, a three versus five. Two-man advantage in play for Team Spirit. Yeah, big whiff from Jerry there. He would have felt like he should have got that kill. He had the drop on the opponent, but he doesn't get the kill he was looking for. And then face crack also gets closed in on. At least Almeza catches SDY in an unsuspecting angle. So fools aren't down and out of this round yet, especially because the time is ticking. This is something I was just saying, that Spirit can really run down the clock and really come close in some of these rounds on Nuke. And they've only got 20 seconds to get onto a bomb site. Thankfully, though, the flank through heaven might be what they need to power. Two kills on the hold. Finally, he falls. Ten seconds left on the clock, though. Miz got to drop down to the site to get this bomb planted. He's going for the open plant, though. Oh, Almeza not going to get the kill, but Flit arrives. First kill is good. And now Mir is trapped on the site, low on health. Flit knows where he is. He's trying to see if he can just land the one shot. Still looking at this right-hand side, but Miz sneaking on round, and here comes Flit. In on this angle, Flit gets the kill, and Fours get their first round on the board. Comes down to the wire, but Flit, he gets the kills in the end, and Fours will be walking away with their first round. Took a while, but in the first gun round, that's where it's important. Bomb plant does afford Team Spirit a little bit of extra cash, but when you take a look at how much damage Force has been able to inflict, it's quite evident when you take a look at what Spirit have. Even after a bomb plant, they won't have enough to get a solid buy. So this is a good opportunity for Force. 
to really start to rack up the cash and get themselves into a position where they can compete at the start on their CT side. You see Team Spirit going with a pistol investment. They've got one AK in the hands of Mir, but the rest, they're on pistol. A little bit of Kevlar, tiny amount of utility, but this should be a forced round all day long. He's quite working out the Mag 7 as well for that close range door angle, but the 100 yards, Spirit got the smoke stuff. And Jerry almost lining up a kill there. Oh, they're going through the smoke as Jerry reloads. That's so smart. And Jerry gets caught by it. Mir gets the kill with the AK. And now Amaza has to make sure he stays alive on this A bomb site. Currently, the only player properly committed to the site itself. So Power also has to be careful of these smokes. These are not the most comfortable positions for fours right now. You can see Power trying to look left and right. He doesn't know if players could be flanking him, but he's about to get a fight here on one of these players. A couple of different angles he's got to deal with. Oh, there it is. Finally, Zapower gets the angle he was looking for. Nice kill from Zapower. Man advantage intact for fours. 50 seconds left in this clock, and I disbalance. He's going to be walking towards outside with Chopper. He's also got Magics just off the left side, currently watching their backs for the secret push. 40 seconds in play. He's still got that one player in the lower bomb side. That's a form of flit. So fours have got pretty much everything covered at the moment. It's still going to be very difficult for Team Spirit to find any way into this. So power spots out. I just balance. He gets rid of him with the AWP. Now he's under pressure though. Chopper moving forward with the Tech 9. That's an AWP picked up and an opening into the B bomb site. And as I've previously mentioned, Flit is down here. He's ready. He's also got help now from Fierce Crack, who has dropped as quickly as he possibly could. And he's on default. No, oh, they try to move forward. The time is the limiting factor, and there's no time anymore. Chopper has to go. He's going to go down before the time. And it's the second round for Fours. Three players staying alive. A little bit hairy at moments, but it's Fours that still win it. Yeah, I like that little trick play from Spirit, though. I think just rushing through those yard smokes, it's the sort of round where it's worth going for something like that, especially because a lot of the time when you hear Jerry reloading there, the only other player that's likely to be close to yard is maybe an all. And there's no way he's going to kill you all if you all rush through that smoke. And they're able to catch Jerry because of it. And that's what opens up the round to begin with. That's what caused those issues for fours where they started to rotate players down to B and they had those vulnerable positions. But now it's back into the gun round for Spirit, so we should see something a bit more standard. And the damage they've done in that previous round could become relevant here, because you can already see, Jerry has an MP9 in this very round. There's really not much money left in the bank for fours, and Flit almost dies through the smoke. Oh, he is going to die now. Great kill from Mir, and they're moving into round. Oh, a lot of damage being inflicted, yeah, onto Artis Barnes and Mir, who's barely standing at this point. But standing nonetheless. 55 seconds for Team Spirit. Still loads of time. You can definitely see a, a difference in their play style here. Much more slow and methodical, and their plays are thought out. They have an idea coming into it. It feels like they've got a better grasp of the timing on this map as well. That's something they have been struggling with, even on their map pick of Dust 2 yesterday. And that's not something we usually attest to Team Spirit. Dust 2 is always one where they look very solid. But again, just coming out of the player break, that's where the little small things in your, in your game are, are going to be off slightly. Just takes a moment to get match fit and ready to play again. And while Flash is coming through off the wall, double Flash is in. Some Young moving forward with the rest of the team. Maybe trying to seize control of the B-bomb site with eight seconds left in the time. Or they do leave it right down to the second. Always gives me a little bit of anxiety, Alex. But they managed to get the bomb planted. And fours, well, they've got a two-man deficit. So this becomes very difficult. Probably in the realms of impossibility. And they'll probably back away and see what they've got. Yeah, Spirit, do leave it close on the time, like you said. I agree, it's always a little bit scary, but at the same time, the, the actual push to the bomb site was pretty well executed by Spirit. Having those two smokes for the window and double door position gives you much more breathing room, much more freedom on the site itself. And I'm happy that we're seeing Spirit take quite a lot of initiative early in these rounds as well. They are putting some pressure on the map in the early proceedings. 
And that's forcing fours to make tough decisions. It's forcing fours to decide whether they want to rotate multiple players down to be there or whether they just want to leave Jerry alone with the MP9. They end up just leaving Jerry with the SMG. There's not much he can do to deny that from happening, especially as the utility lands in his face. He gets spammed through the door. And that time round, fours couldn't make the correct call on the rotation. So as long as Spirit can continue to get these opening kills, they could be in for a really good T side of Nuke here. It certainly started strong for them. They've still got to go up against a gun round in this one. Falls with the full rifles into this round, and it could be a fast A play from Spirit. They're lining up for this. They are indeed, and now the push comes through and towards the A bomb sites. Magic that opens things up with a clean and clinical headshot. Almirzo is the victim. And now Team Spirit, that's a nice change in pace. They've been slow and methodical this entire half so far, but quickly taking this A-bomb site, catches fours off guard, and now they have to play with a man deficit into the retake. And there's still so much utility left for Team Spirit. They use that smoke up, and they still got a couple of flashbangs. So, at this point, it's very difficult for fours. That smoke buys some extra time as well, and they can just force them back. Force realized one look at their economy, and they're not in a position where they can really afford to go for this. I love the call from Team Spirit. Yeah, I think some good calls from Chopper here at the start of this nuke game. Especially because they, they heard Face Crack was spamming towards the door there. So as soon as that stops, as soon as they can count that he's out of ammo, they know they're likely rushing the A site against maybe a maximum of two players. That man at mini probably isn't going to be in play. And if it's only the one man on A, you know that if you can just get that quick kill, it's round over. And that's part of why they go for that call. They realize that there's a decent opportunity here. There's a decent chance that there is only the one CT who's able to fight right now. A spirit take that timing window they make the most of it and they force fours to take an early pause here because fours already 5-2 down here on this ct side of nuke and normally their ct side is pretty damn good on this map they normally win at 60 percent of their rounds on the t side or, or ct side rather and on their t side they're nowhere near as good on their win rate so this is a, a bit concerning for fours i'm sure at the start here they've still got guns they've still been able to save it's not the start they would have been looking for. Oh, that's not the start the power is looking for into the round, but he does get quickly over to the door, so he can find a kill. That would be perfect. I guess I'll take the trade off of all the two points of damage being done for the kill. Good opening for fours. So power's gonna drop down into the lower site immediately as well via the vent. Definitely good to see him getting more involved in some of these early fights, the early action here in this swamp. That's his first opening kill so far here on Nuke. He's definitely been landing a few more shots at the start of this map. Spirits still have smokes if they want to go for this yard play, but look at who's waiting for them. So Power currently clearing the top of Silo, but he's got to be careful. Oh, they don't clear him. So Power gets a freebie, even though he wasn't aware the players were so close by. And there's another player pushing him. So Power misses that shot. Chopper trying to close the distance, but he's the only man remaining. First kill found for Spirit, but Chopper needs four more to win this one, and he doesn't even have the bomb. 40 seconds as Chopper heads into the lower bomb site. He doesn't have the bomb, like you said, and he doesn't have a chance. So he's just looking for what he can find. A couple of kills, a little bit of damage, forced a few rebuys on fours. The money is in a pretty dire situation. Team Spirit can buy into the next round, so he does have the option just to hunt and give away or take away as many weapons as he can. He doesn't even seem to want to do that, really. He seems to just want to carry over what he's got, which is a full set of uh, utility and Kevlar and an AK-47, so definitely worthwhile not dipping into the funds. I love, uh, I love how the power just dives off the top of heaven. There's 21 damage, but he... In doing so, I guess he gets there quickly to the door. So he has to he set up ready for the iron goal. And just to find the opening kill. And fours after that, it all spiraled out of control for Team Spirit. 
And the first tactical pause coming in for Team Spirit. They used up quite a lot of those in the first half of Inferno. Perhaps not feeling the pressure as much here on Nuke up until this point. They shouldn't need too many more rounds, though, to be happy with their T side, in all honesty. Yep. How this has started for them, I think they'll be pretty good right now, at least feeling good. As we were saying earlier, yesterday, they only got five T rounds in the entire half against OG. And then on their CT side, they did decently. They they took it to a 16-12 scoreline in that game. But if they'd have got a few more rounds on the T side, which they maybe should have been able to get, they probably would have had a good chance to win that one. So the fact they've got five on the board so early here gives them so much freedom to be able to just need a few more to give themselves a good half and to give themselves a good chance of closing out their map pick. Minus balance with AWP in hand, looking for the pick over at Yard. There's no one here right now to meet him, though. No one here willing to take this fight. Looks like another slow start for Spirit. Well, the wall of smokes towards outside rins on in. It's going to allow Magic to mirror alongside Chopper to walk on through. It has the flash find that they go around the corner. Fierce crack diving on in a second kill. Looking for the spray onto the third. That was, well, it was perfect. You could have got everyone, but it's huge from Fierce crack. That advantage in play for Force thanks to that incredible play. But I just balances the equalizer for the team spirit team. He's going to dive down on towards Mini on the roof now as well. Still a little bit aware of the possibility of a player being behind credit card, but Flit has got out of there. Instead, playing from the blue box. 40 seconds left. Forces is going to step back. Team Spirit's on them to try and figure out what they want to do. They're still with three players towards outside. Not a whole lot of map control available to them. They're going to have to move quite quickly at this point. They run the clock down quite a bit. And we've seen a few times where it's come back to bite them. And the pressure towards outside from Flit may slow them down. 19 seconds. They just have no time to waste now. They have to sprint to this lower bomb site. They have to get the bomb planted immediately upon arriving. And the rotation's coming in from fours as quickly as possible. Amir's just sprinting towards the ramp. They're going to allow the bomb plant because the smoke is down. Almeza could go for the random shot, but it's not going to work out. He's spotted by some by Young, and it's all on Almeza. And he might be bailing out of this round. Up the ladder he goes, giving up on this one. I thought Zapower might just take that pot shot through the smoke, like you were saying. It's pretty likely the bomb's being planted somewhere in the smoke at that point. You know that the one shot could win you the round. But he goes searching for a kill while the bomb's being planted, realizing that the teammates might be trying to defend the bomb planter. Unfortunately, though, just not given that angle. And again, uh, you can say what you want about Spirit running the clock down, but so far, they haven't put a foot wrong with these low time scenarios. Every single time, they've just about made the right decisions. They've made the right reads. It does mean that you have to make sure everything is on point in those last 10 seconds. If you just overlook one position, it can cost you the round. So far, so good for Team Spirit. And that was even despite face crack. Getting that double spray down to begin with, getting his team off to a good start in the round. Force unable to capitalize, though. Unable to win the round off the back of it. Spirit keep on grinding here on the T side. Up to six rounds now. Quick play from Team Spirit down in towards the site. Face crack with the first death. Magic's opening it up. Sum Young and Chopper following suit. And this is perfect from Team Spirit. Exactly what you wanted. A very quick, clean, and clinical play where they get the required kills. And they have control of the A-bomb site. That's the round done. Flitting to power. Take a, again one look at the economy force. I feel like that's been a common story throughout this entire half is the fact that they've just been struggling economically on this CT side. So they have to save again. They can't afford to go for these attempts. Especially because it's incredibly unlikely they will even find their way near the bomb site. That's going to be seven on the board for Team Spirit. Seven rounds T side of Nuke. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm liking these little A fast plays that Spirit are kind of sprinkling in every now and then. It's like you're eating a normal cake and then you get a, a sprinkle of ginger or something. It's, it's a nice little bit of spice to keep things up in terms of the pace every now and then. And I've noticed in the past as well that Force have sometimes had some issues at defending that A site. I think that's in part because Flit's normally playing ramp and Zapower's normally playing at yards. So the, the three riflers on the A site have to step up tremendously. Normally it's Almeza who's playing as that anchor. He's done a, a pretty decent job so far. 
but at times they are just getting rushed down and this buy from fours is far from perfect. Face Crack's even got a Nova, which I almost never see Dinko. Every time I buy the Nova, I get a Dink and not a kill. So let's see what Face Crack can do. Well, the Alligator at the ready, but Face Crack can't do anything. Jerry with a 5-7 gets one, but the rest of the kills ran on through. It's Team Spirit again, another quick play into the A-bomb site. So Sucker Punch knocking fours right back and flittings the power yet again. Another scenario where it's exactly the same as the last round. Again, your two-star players just don't get involved in the round. They're not playing on that A site, so it's up to the other players from Force to step up. And even though we said Almeza and Facecrack had been having good games previously, it's not quite carried over into this one. And you've also got to give credit to Spirit because they are landing some incredible shots. You saw how Facecrack died there. He basically didn't have the chance. Mir lands another great headshot there at the end. Spirit just dialed in right now individually. And this is starting to spiral out of control for Force. Oh, Flit. I love it. Okay. He gets the AWP away. That's a, that's a way of dealing with that. Just dives off the roof. Well, brilliant stuff. From Team Spirit, though. Again, just very quick, simple plays. Very effective. I mean, you have to get the job done effectively. You can't call for the A rush and, and not get those opening kills. The fact that Team Spirit are just hitting everything is a big problem for Fours. They have not been able to hold on. Jerry's on two kills right now. Fist crack on four. Almeza, who is unbelievable over an Inferno. I mean, still at the top of the team in terms of the kills, but that kind of speaks for how Fours are performing, that it kills as a top fragger. This is definitely a, a rough showing over here for uh, Team Spirit. I mean, nine kills is the top, but the whole team is performing. Yeah, and it is Chopper at the top. I think it was Potter who was pointing out on the desk that Chopper normally is a pretty good fragging in-game leader, but so far in this tournament, he'd, he'd had some slow starts. He'd had some quiet games. This is where we get to see him stepping up. And I think this time around, Spirit will finally not call for the fast A play. They've been going for it so often that it's probably not worth the risk this time around, they realize. There was a slight switch up at the start of this round, so Power's all is trying to be a bit more mobile, moving into ramp alongside Flit to begin with. Might see some aggression as well. Fours looking to take that radio room control, looking to push through the ramp. That could give them a lot of information because right now Spirit are focusing on this yard control. So the aggression through ramp from Fours should allow them to realize that it's unlikely to be an A play right now. Jerry's just going to be sitting behind these smokes. And the power, there he is, pushed in through ramp. That's the switch up of his positioning, and it catches Spirit off guard. Running straight down the secret stairs. I'll be a quicker at seize of the, uh, the B bomb site here from Team Spirit. Gonna try and boost around this corner to see if any players are on the stairs. Magic perfectly spot space crack, but the damage has been done. Two magics. He'll throw the Molotov. Team Spirit taking a lot of damage on board. Yeah, no deaths other than Ida's balance. Somehow, everyone is surviving, but they're just so low in HP. We've got 22, 11, and 14. Finally, the kills are coming in from fours. And with 25 seconds left, finally, it's looking like Team Spirit will be dropping around here. Fours have not been able to compete in the last couple of rounds, but this, this is much better. Finally, those finishing blows coming through. So Power landing a shot with the AWP at the end there. Mir mainly focused on saving the AK. Three seconds left. He should be fine to do so. And obviously, Fours want to focus on their own economy as well. Oh, there we go. Even an AWP at the end there for Mir. Saving his team a bit more money. A nice switch up from Sapower. He, he hadn't really gone ramp in any of the rounds so far, so I like that he goes for a bit of aggression. He realized that this game was kind of slipping away from fours. Y you can even see on the scoreboard, Flit's nine for four right now. He's only died four times because he's been playing ramp room a lot and he hasn't been involved a lot in these rounds. So they go for a bit of an aggression through ramp, a position that Spirit hadn't been playing too often. And here comes the peak fry disbalance. This is ballsy. I love this though. Walking into the open, power though, play Playing the patience game, not able to land the first shot, not able to land the second either, but he will get away to safety. The power scoped in, I just balance. Oh, he oh. drops to the left side, and the power looking for the shot. Mir oh, no. just holding on as Flick goes up towards the top ladder, and uh, he's out of that. Four versus four. Oh no, Amir's across is right into the wedding crosshair of Sundar Young. 
Needs to get one kill, but Team Spirit still in the lead in terms of the manpower. And Sam Dayang burns away face crack at the bottom of the vent. This is all crumbling for fours. Feels like every fours player we switch to is just instantly put in a terrible position. Dead. Yeah. Dead. Flick going up the ladder, doesn't realize me is there. There we go, oh. a power finally breaking the curse, getting a nice shot on the edge of the smoke, but there needs to be more where that came from if Fools are going to win this round. And the, the issue does become, it is the power and, and Jerry, and it's not really the, Jerry's not really the playmaker right now, two kills. So it's a safe call coming in. And that's a ninth round picked up from the T side. That's impressive from Team Spirit. You can definitely see why they want to pick this map. They're very, very comfortable. Blair mentioned it in the pre-show or the pre-game. Uh, pre We're I mean, talking about the fact that they are superior on this map to Force. You know, we say Force can play, but they certainly can. But Team Spirit just a better team on the map. Yeah, just looking at the uh, overall map pool for this series, uh, the third map being Dust 2, I think Spirit will be really happy with because that's a map that they actually pick very often as well. I believe that's why is Dust 2 is actually their most picked map. They go for Nuke pretty often, but Dust 2 is, is basically their other map that they will pick a lot of the time. So Spirit are going to be really happy with these last two maps. We're already seeing Nuke shine for them rounds on their team's side. If they get 10 or 11, it could be all over. Oh, it's oh, by Young. <laughs> He's got down the vent, Fierce Crack went for a little check. I, I think eventually Fierce Crack's just going to stop going to the vent. He had a bit of a nightmare scenario in the previous round, and then here again. So a man advantage picked up for Team Spirit. is untreated as well. It's very close to being treated with Magic's down to 8 HP, but he will survive. Speaking of Dust 2, because we have to think about it as a real possibility at this point, when we look at Dust 2, it's a map that I kind of put in the same category as Overpass. I was mentioning yesterday for Fours that Overpass is one of the maps they play, but I've never really been convinced about. Dust 2 kind of falls into the same category. I'm not, I've never really been too confident in Fours as Dust 2, so we'll see if they can change that up going into the third map if we need to go there. Yeah, I definitely favor Team Spirit if we head to the third map right now. So Fours have a lot of work to do if they want to pick up this Series 2-0. Uh, behind, 9-4. to four. Wit looking to try and strike from the backside. He has got one kill. Jerry as well, standing tall. But it's just every kill goes in favor of Team Spirit. There's just not enough output from Fours. The trade potential isn't really there. They're not getting it done. And Team Spirit, they're going to reach double figures from the T side. That's a round where Fours had three players on that lower side of the site as well. They had three players in position towards B. They just don't get enough kills between them. Even when they get the right reads on the situation, Spirit are just landing very quick kills. Fours are just half a second too slow on all these positions at getting these trades. I think a lot of the time as well, whoever gets the first kill can really go on to, to just trade on out and continue to get those further frags and if you get the first kill as the ct then the opponents have to focus you and then your teammates can start to really make the most of the distraction that you're running but not really happening here this time he doesn't look very happy dinko i think he might be a fours fan yeah he doesn't seem happy at all yeah might be a fours player as well at this point his crack has been having a real rough time when he's gone towards that vent position. Look kind of bad for it in the last two rounds, but we'll see what they can do into the last round of the half. A fifth round from the CT side. I mean, it's not ideal, obviously, but it's the best they can hope for now at this point. Team Spirit. What a turnaround as well. I think Inferno is uh, up in the area. I mean, that, that's one of Four's best maps. We know Team Spirit are solid enough on it. We've seen the fight. It's definitely brought to the map, but it was, there was times and mistakes there for uh, Team Spirit. But over in Nuke, they just looked like a much more solid force, less mistakes being made, uh, winning pretty much every aim draw, and making the right calls in terms of when to switch it up. They've had the slower approaches, they've played the defaults, they've run down the clock, but they've also had it up their sleeve where they can go for those quicker plays when called for when towards the A bomb site. And that's the kind of spirit we like to see, the unpredictable nature. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I think Chopper's calling has really been the biggest thing that's got them to this point. I think that's a, a great point there, just how often they've switched it up. You even just look at the kills, and it, it's not like anyone has a massive amount of kills, because fools are having to save so often. A lot of the times, fools are losing the first couple of fights, and then they have to save. And that's partly because the Spirit players are just winning a bunch of the opening fights, but partly because Chopper's oftentimes calling for them to hit the weak points, to find the gaps, to find the weak spots in the defense. That's what's helped them get these 10 rounds on the board. And it's another slow one here to close out the half. 25 seconds left, and all of Spirit are sneaking their way towards B. But here comes the rush, making some noise now. Yeah, charging on through. Flit is in the control room. The windows to his right side. He will have to look through very shortly now as they run up through the ramp. He'll spot a couple of heads. He could just drop the bomb. It's on the floor. Nine seconds. They need to get back on the site and pick up that bomb. And start to get the plant on through. This Idis Balance holding off face crack. The bomb will go down. A three versus two favoring team spirit as it's all on Almezer. Having to retake versus three. And he'll take the first kill on the Idis Balance, but still two players to find and then two very difficult positions to deal with. One above him, one just below. You know, throw the smoke on to the right side to try and separate the two players. He's really thinking about how he can get back into this site and maybe through the window is where he'll go chopper. Oh, he reacts quick enough. It's going to be 11-4. Team Spirit, a dominant half on the T side. We'll see if fours can bounce back. Fours struggling in the first half. It's time to see if they can relight the fire that they had on Inferno. We head into the second half. It's Team Spirit on 11 rounds. They're looking to try and send us to the third map, which would be dust too. But here in the second half, Fours look desperately for this first round. Oh, and it's... Wow, an okay start for them. One for one trade onto this A-bomb site. Aggression from Mir won't work out for him. Zapala's ready for it. 
And now this bomb should be planted on the other side of the silo. Spirit not able to deny that. And at this point, the 3v4 retake will not be easy for them. Ooh. Okay. That is clean from Sumdai Young. And I'll hide this bounce. He looks for a little bit more. He'll find one and a oh. second kill onto Split. That's brilliant. Now Amazer, he's alone in the world. He can still win it, but Magic says no. He'll get the defuse. And Team Spirit, it's going to be the pistol into the second half. 12-4 up now. I feel like Foy's really needed that. And if they win this follow-up round, Team Spirit are going to be in a real good position. Prime position to take us to the third map, which will be Dust 2. And for reasons I've already sort of discussed, I'm definitely going to favor Team Spirit, especially with the way that they've started to perform here as well. The individuals are all showing up. They're hitting shots. It, on Inferno, it was mainly just magic. But now we've got Ida's Balance hitting some shots in the pistol round. Chopper top fragging as the in-game leader. This is much better from Team Spirit. Yeah, really looking good on an individual basis. Spirit. Stepping up tremendously. Force have got the hero AK out in this round. I always call this the CIS special because the CIS teams love to try and just get this one AK to win them around. And that's exactly how they needed to start it off. Almeza opens things up with this AK-47. There's no way they're really getting that gun anytime soon. It's dropped pretty far away. But at least they get the man advantage and they might get the chance for the second. Almeza delivering the headshots, delivering the pain right now with this AK. And Spirit now are down in a 3v5. These players have to be locked in to win this round. This is really scary for Team Spirit. Sum Da Young has gone on a bit of an excursion to try and find something, and he will. Jerry not reacting. That's a kill back. Magics as well. Catching out face crack. And all that hard work that Almezu put in at the start of the round is completely neutralized by those two kills. He'll get another fry. Magix is doing everything as Quit desperately tries to chip away with enough bullets on the Glock, but it just won't happen. Some Da Young getting two on the XM, picking up the AK-47. A nice try from Almezu. He nearly does enough. Just every weapon that got dropped was just too far away to pick up. So everyone still had to stay with the pistols. He, he did a lot of work. I mean, three kills is still impressive. He, he definitely warranted the buy. But just unfortunate the rest of his team couldn't amount to anything really with the pistols. I think if Blit didn't have a Glock, he might have been able to get that kill from behind Red Container as well. He might have been able to trade off the back of Almazer and maybe win his team the round. But unfortunately, the Glock is the last weapon you want there. And now Fools have got to do it with this buy. But Idis Balance denies Exa Power early. The AWP will be recovered by Almeza. And he throws it back into the hands of Flit. So at least they can keep that gun. But it's still not what Fools needed at the start of this one. They go a man behind early. Flit paying the patience game. But I don't think Mir's going to round the corner. Flit will fall back. And Fools will look for a different avenue of approach. You know, being a man down this early on is not exactly what Fours wanted. Smoke execute towards outside is certainly going to work for them. I'll get some control at least. Saying the player's on five. This crack has been spotted crossing out to the left side. Mir with a kill through the smoke. Jerry starting to cross down towards secret. That's not good. <laughs> You've lost two players already here, Fours. Absolutely no chance for the trade. And oh, I just balance. He's going to catch one in the open. Flit just walking through as the smoke faded. And that's the bomb. That's the bomb on the floor. He knows they've picked it up. He's seen that at least. Mir comes to try and help. This is the worst round that Fours could have played out. This is horrible for them. Just a matter of time before Team Spirit take this round win. Another headshot from Sun Da Young. And it's just Almezer. They know where he is as well at least where he was. This becomes very difficult indeed. Nine seconds all about saving into the next round. And well, the utility comes in. The bombardment of bullets and three players coming now as well. He tries to hold them off. He goes down before the time. So at least he gets money. Would have loved the Team Spirit just to wait for a second there. Go around the corner and kill him after. But nonetheless, they do get it done. 14 to 4. They are two away from victory now at this point. For us, it's it's hard to see a world in which they perform any more rounds here. I, I think this is a done deal. Yeah, it feels like it at this point. Spirit just a level above fours on this map, in all honesty. Face crack trying to get aggressive. Mir to 
pretty good position on the other side. Face crack lands the headshot, though. Even though he took the damage first, Miz not quite able to continue the spray. Flitz dropped down, though. He got greedy. He wanted the gun. You can see why he'd want it, but there was a player waiting for him. SDY taking up his teammate's former position. Magic's in at ramp has had a, a quieter game here, but mainly because his teammates have been doing all the heavy lifting. I thought he might be about to be tested, but Fours have decided to double back towards A, and they have basically no nades to make this work. So they've got to land some really good shots here. Chopper will be prepared for the hold. Well, the smoke goes down for the mini position, and some die young. Instead of hiding behind the smoke, he walks forward and gets three kills. Chopper backs them up for the final, and it's 15 to four. Team Spirit one away from victory and fours. But on their last legs, they will invest everything. It has to be flawless from here on in just to get it to overtime. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's done. This this one's done. We're seeing Dust 2 come up. That's going to be a bloodbath if Force can somehow rekindle any form that they had from Inferno. But Team Spirit is hard not to fear for them. It's going to be Force quickly trying to stay alive. Just sprints into the top side. First kill, first crack, second as well. This is brilliant from Force. Backs against the ropes. Nothing to lose. Let's just rush the A bomb sign. It works out for them. They'll live to fight another day, but for how long? Yeah, some fast flying entries from Face Crack. Definitely something we'd like to see more of in this series. Especially if we do go over to Dust 2, which looks very likely right now. That's much more of what Face Crack was doing over on Inferno, getting quite a few of those early kills and. Sometimes if you just get one or two entries, that's all you need, especially on Nuke on that A site. Nice round for fours, but they're obviously still way too far behind to have a realistic chance here. It is a long shot to say the least. Spirit even getting to save over these two guns so they can continue to buy into the net. SDY up there at 21 kills. Top fragging for his team, having a good game here. Sometimes can be a, a bit of a quieter player just because he has a more passive play style, but he's definitely one of the stars on this Spirit roster. On a pretty star-studded roster as well. Yeah, Spirit now looking for that one more round to get the win. Yeah, I feel like uh, some of young in different versions of Spirit, he was the clear-cut star. But now the team is full of firepower, it's quite difficult to have enough space to consistently do this. So I agree. Uh, I think some of young is certainly one of the players that is sometimes overlooked now in this team Spirit side, but... Never take your eye off him. He is a very intelligent and very skillful player. And it looks like they've done enough here, Team Spirit. They're going to be walking away with this. Second map is uh, being pretty one-sided throughout the start of this. Always maybe had a couple of chances, but Team Spirit, they walk away with a 16-5 win. Very impressive performance. The difference between Team Spirit from map number one and two is the fact that it wasn't just Magic. It was everybody showing up. Chopra had the good performance we were looking for. And I'm excited to see if Spirit can keep this up going into the third map because from Dust 2 yesterday, they didn't look that great. Yeah, a lot of that was individual skill there from Nuke as well, for Spirit on Nuke there. So on Dust 2, if you see more of the same, that's an exciting prospect for sure. We know that Spirit can play Dust 2 even if we didn't see much of it. So I, I think in general, Spirit are going to be really happy, obviously with that win, but also really happy with their chances heading into Dust 2. As I was saying earlier, these last two maps in this series are both really good ones for Team Spirit. Yeah, well, that leaves nothing else but for us to go to Dust 2. We're going to go to a short break first, then we'll be back with the test to break down Nuke, and we'll be heading to the final map. like Team Spirit as they claim their map pick of Nuke, a dominant 16-5 showing as they take map number three. We're going to Dust 2. It was a rough showing from Fours, but I feel like on the side of Spirit, everybody was showing up, weren't they, Christine? And this is something you were saying was going to be so dangerous about this squad. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you could see that Spirit were really feeling good, but really, I mean, Chopper was feeling his best. And I think that just goes hand in hand when Chopper, he's getting the control that he wants. He's finding the duels that he wants towards that outside yard. His calling ability, that job, it just becomes so much easier. Your options all of a sudden become endless. And that's kind of what we saw. We saw Chopper getting that under ladder control, getting that secret control. And from that point on, he could just do whatever he wanted at that point. Yeah, exactly. And especially on that T side that we saw with the first half, that was so dominant from them, wasn't it? Of course, some Dayang obviously topping the scoreboard there. But yeah, just a, a really, really stellar performance from Team Spirit. I don't know whether you have any thoughts uh, on that first half in particular, Blair. Uh, the first half was, was just great Counter-Strike overall from Team Spirit. I was feeling a little nervous with how slow some of those rounds were. They're taking a sweet time, 20, 25 seconds remaining on the clock before they go for the hit. But one thing which works for Team Spirit is how so in sync they are. When they pounce on their lower bomb sets, sometimes they don't even have much utility to work with, but they just kind of run like a pack of wolves, right? And when they strike, the trading is so on point, the spacing is great as well. And even in between, they, they caught uh, the other guys off guard a couple of times from going for these fast hits towards the upper bomb site. So good variation, but I feel like even though you look at a scoreline 16-4, it looks very one-sided. I'll be real, I feel like uh, Fours gave too many opportunities to Team Spirit. There's so many times where Fours would get maybe a man advantage or be a 4v4, and they'd have their players in these positions where they're going to get double peaked or they'll be in a scenario where they're just going to get traded immediately. And that's where Spirit were very good at, this kind of semi-war of attrition that played very slow, very passive, wait for Fours to make a mistake and to punish them for it. Yeah, I think you're totally right in that, Blair. I think as well, we did see a few, you know, fast rounds sprinkled in as well, because that was something that we all were a little bit worried about coming off that first map, taking it a little bit too slow. Sometimes they wouldn't even get the bomb down in time. Christine, do you think maybe that was kind of to push fours off guard a little bit? Because, you know, we were saying before this series, these are two CIS teams that are so used to facing off against one another. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. And I'm sure that Chopper, he brought those different variations and controlled the pace so well. So it definitely threw fours for a loop because I wrote in my notes here that Face Crack and Flint, they did not have any fun in this series. And specifically for Face Crack's point of view, I mean, there was even a round where he got burned out by Molotov in that vent. And for Flint, he was playing Rotate Strike the majority of the time from ramp and trying to get involved into the action. But that disconnect from the communication, we even saw him getting killed off by a player up heaven. X Power, he already saw that player there. So there should have been that information passed along, but there was definitely a disconnect and it just made it so much harder for them to actually put up a defense. Yeah, well, this leaves us with one map apiece, both sides taking their respective map picks. And this leaves us going into Dust 2. I know you were saying coming into this series, Blair, you were favoring Team Spirit. Are you still favoring them going into this third and final map? I will. Historically, these two lineups, they faced off on Dust 2 six times if memory serves me right and uh it's actually tied even fours have won three maps they've actually won i believe the last time to face up against team spirit and spirit have won three of theirs as well the thing is the, the maps that fours have won on dust two have been 16 14 and the other two maps have won were in triple or quadruple overtime so it's been very close affairs when they win when team spirit wins is a little bit more convincing well what i like from team spirit like potter pointed out is about the entire team stepping up and i think that's going to be a factor here when it comes to dust two where on the other side Side, four to side of fours. Magic has been really on point, but Z Power, he has been a little quiet, so that could be a problem. This is going to be the time that he really does need to step up. We're going to be heading into Dust 2. It's going to be the deciding map. After this, one team will be progressing and one will be going home. We're going to find out who after this. 